Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Claris FileMaker training course on how to build a custom CRM in 30 days. This training is designed primarily for beginners or those of you who need kind of a refresher with the Claris FileMaker platform. Over the course of 30 days, we're going to spend about an hour each day covering topics from the very basics of the Claris FileMaker platform in terms of the tools, the products, deployment, security, all those things you need to know about as you build a custom application. So keep in mind that towards the beginning of the training, the topics are more basic in nature. And as we get towards the end of the training, they're somewhat more advanced. I would say probably intermediate level topics. Now keep in mind this special part of this training is that while we're not only talking about the FileMaker platform, we're talking how you can rapidly customize an existing free CRM that you can download today. It's unlocked. So taking that CRM and customizing it to your organization's particular needs. Now, a couple important links to keep in mind. One is that if you need a copy of FM Starting Point, the free unlock CRM, visit fmstartingpoint.com and press the button. And then our system will shoot you an email with the current links to that CRM. If you're looking for additional FileMaker training, visit fmtraining.tv and press the bundles button. And that will allow you to get more of this highly animated and somewhat energetic training material to help you through the learning process with the Claris FileMaker platform. Lastly, if you have questions about the FileMaker platform or you're looking for some additional help, maybe some one-on-one -on -one coaching help, feel free to email us at support at rcconsulting.com. I have some helpers here today with me. We are going to be uh, answering questions. Today is a little bit more of an open question as we run into it, but as we go forward over the next 30 days, we're going to try to keep the questions on topic. If they're really off topic, then we will direct you to take, uh, talk to us about a question offline. So, for example, if we're talking about defining relationships and someone wants to know, how do I sync an offline copy with their office in Brazil, then we would probably take that conversation off. Uh, offline after the event or some other thing like that. So helping me today or here today is Michael. Michael, are you there? How's it going? You are hopefully going very, very well. Uh, welcome that you're here. Uh, so what I have is a kind of a little bit of a basic slide here, but just as kind of to get everyone going. And the idea is for the next 30 days, we're going to be doing a beginning level training course in the world of FileMaker with our fingers on going deep when we need to. And if one of you asks us to do that, um, depending if we're on topic, we can dig a little deeper. It depends on the audience. It really does. But a lot of the training here, especially if some of my other engineers are involved, can be very much on the deep side. So I know some of you want deep, you like deep, you want to go deep all the time. Um, and so the next 30 days will be decidedly not that. So we're going to take this training over the next 30 days. It's going to be also cleaned up, edited, maybe animated a little bit, and this will become a cohesive set of training for begin, uh, beginning and brand new FileMaker people, Claris FileMaker platform folks who are either using the solution or trying to figure out if they should be using it because it gets into this whole idea of re return on investment. So real quick, um, the whole goal is to get you going in a platform. I've been doing this for 32, 33 years. Some of you have been doing it that long have had greater even success than I have, but I just happen to be guy, the guy doing the TV show today. So uh, the goal with FileMaker is that you take something like this. So this is, for those of you wondering about this, this is 10,000 US dollars right here, okay? This is what 10 grand looks like in $100 bills in the United States. Good props for Hollywood, right? And so you take $10,000 and you turn it into $50,000, right? If you have an organization, you have a business, in the case of Michael, uh, those of you saw him here a little bit ago, Michael Scott has worked wonders at the uh, California Department of Transportation and different government agencies. So it doesn't have to be business. In your organization, you have some sort of job or th a thing that you do. If you're in education, you're training or teaching people, obviously, if you could put $10,000 of effort into something and get a $50,000 return or more, is actually 40,000, 50,000 would be the entire stack together. If you could turn that into that kind of return on investment, that's a good deal. That's not uncommon with the FileMaker platform. If people have really bad software or they have no software at all, this is not uncommon. That's why we're here. That's why when some people, they come in, they, 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 they use FileMaker, they get to a point they're happy and then they quit kind of learning it. But that's not for you today. The people here are trying to get into it and figure out how they can save time and money. And we have some tools and some tips and tricks that will help you get past that further faster. So this is gonna be recorded. 
we're going to make the recordings available. Not every day is going to be applicable for you, so pick the days that you feel that you need. But it, once again, it's decidedly more basic. Yeah, absolutely. First off, so let's just cover the basics here, 30-day CRM. How this goes day-to-day -day is a little bit variable. Um, I'm not married to a specific schedule. We have a loose schedule of what we're going to do. We have a pretty good idea of what we'll be doing on day four, day five, but some days may go longer or shorter. And you may ask questions that are relevant that takes us in a different direction a little bit. And so this is 30 calendar days, it's 22 broadcast days, but if it goes more days because we need more days, I will use more days, right? It's my TV show, and if I think it's important, we'll do it. Up front, let's talk about today's curriculum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop open. This is kind of loosely what uh, my outline of what we're going through. Most of it's going to be demoing and showing you software, tips and tricks, how to be successful. I, I really need questions from you if you have questions, right? So, of course, when you're doing training, today's obligatory introductory day. Um, we will show the CRM and what we're going to do and what we're going to customize and what we're going to do for you. In fact, I'm going to go way out of our way to help all of you on this. And so as you, if you take a copy of our CRM and you customize it and you start working on it and you want us to put it on a server for you for this month, I will throw it on our server for you so you can try it out for this calendar month. Um, and then you can access it on that server. Uh, there's no charge for that. It's an evaluation uh, for you to evaluate that. Everything we're doing here is totally free. So in the event that you really hate this, then I promise a 100% refund. That being said, there's no uh, cost for the training. There's no cost for the CRM. Um, you have to buy FileMaker if you don't have it. And if you need it, then we'll help you with that or figure something out. But what I'm saying is that if you have the FileMaker file, we will put it on the server, on a server for you so you can share it on the internet. Pretty cool. So up front, um, the, if you're here, you probably have a clue about the FileMaker platform. There's the, So what this documentation that you're going to see is is a combination of Claris's curriculum a little bit. A lot of it's out of date back f over the last 10 years. Some help documents that Claris has put together, plus some no-nonsense, no-BS conversation and editing that I've done to it to make it mm, more real, shall we say, right? 32 years of doing this, I have a pretty good idea of what works and doesn't work. So real quick, let me just make the outs the, the basic case for this, and we'll talk about this a little bit. Um, let's talk about the new CRM real quick. So for those of you wondering, what we're going to do is we're going to train you two things. One, you're going to start, we'll have demos of various features or capabilities in FileMaker. We will demonstrate those in a blank FileMaker file, like a total black and white brand new FileMaker file. Then we're also going to talk about how that might be applicable if you're customizing a CRM, Customer Relationship Management Software, CRM. So that's not QuickBooks. QuickBooks is accounting. Uh, it tries to do a little bits of CRM, but it sucks at it. Everyone who uses it for that complains about it. Uh, QuickBooks is an acknowledged accounting system. People love it accounting. If you have accounting people and they're like true accountants, like number nerds, right? They love QuickBooks. They love stuff like that. FileMaker is the that FileMaker is a software that really runs the rest of the business. It doesn't really do accounting. You can do accounting with it. You could do it, but it's just cheaper to buy QuickBooks and be done with it. FileMaker can talk to QuickBooks if you want to do that. Not something we're doing here because it's a little bit more of an advanced topic. So what we want to do is I'm going to bring up my browser real quick, and I'm going to visit the uh, where we have the CRM. So if you go to FM starting point, uh, starting point, there we go. So uh, the engineer that helped work on this is here today with us. We have a new version. This is version beta 22. Normally, I'm not going to go through this right now, but you click on this. You just fill this in. You're getting a free CRM. This CRM, I'm into this CRM over the last 10 years for about a million bucks. That's because we've rebuilt it three or four or five times. And it's a great giveaway that we give to customers. We give to people. Our competitors use this software and charge their time to customize it. I got a call from two CEOs from two other FileMaker consultancies going, hey, can we steal this and use this with our customers? I said, well, as long as you loosely credit us with the origination of the stealing, right, the CRM software, that's fine. Um, but you can't resell it. But if you want to customize, someone else said, well, what if I want to take this free software we're about to show you and customize it for plumbing or dentistry or some vertical market? And can I resell it? Absolutely. Um, you just have to modify it for some vertical market. So you fill this out and you prove that you're not a robot, which means that you have to solve this Pythagorean theorem. And then, you know, A squared plus B squared, C squared is a bunch of physics and stuff. And it proves you're not a robot. You get the download for free. Not to be intimidated by that in any way. So when you go to FM Starting Point and download it, 
you're going to get this FileMaker file right here. It works on pretty much any version of 19 um, for the most part. Um, it might work on 17, but I, you know, FileMaker 19 has been out for at least three years, so try to be using 19. Uh, it's called version 22 because it's after the year 2022. We quit, we quit trying to number it. Um, so anyway, uh, real quick, so it pops open. And so this is the, the basis of the new version of FM starting point is what we're going to be talking with you and customizing with you. Mike will be helping with that. This historically has had some sort of chart on it, fake chart. Um, instead of doing that, we said, well, what if, and what if you're, you had a chart here? What else is important to you? This is your dashboard. Um, it's the information that you find important that as you log into the system, you want everyone to see. In some systems, maybe it's just a text note here saying that Friday is casual Friday and everyone should wear their Hawaiian shirts or something. You put it in here, right? Maybe you do it that way. Um, but at the end of the day, a CRM is fundamentally a it's customer relationship management. What and that whatever that means for you, right? So customers could be contacts, or uh, you know, a customer could be who knows what. If you're a nonprofit. You're, and you're doing rescue animals and getting uh, adopting a, uh, dogs and cats that have been abandoned. You're doing that. That's your business. You know, what are your customers? And maybe you'd have another section there for the animals that you're helping. But basically, we have a people management right here. This is the people. You have an accounts, which are um, organizations, some sort of, it's not a person, but a, I don't want to say business, but it's a school or nonprofit or something like that. Estimates and invoices, projects and products, and everyone's going, well, I don't have that, or I call it something else. The number one and two comments over here, if I pop this up, uh, can you chat us the link? The link is fmstartingpoint.com, and then you uh, just fill out the, uh, the little form, because what it has, you, you're signing up to get my newsletter, right? So if you get a million dollars in free software, which is great, um, <laughs> then I get to shoot you an email, and you can unsubscribe from the email if you want. We get that, and then people are unsubscribed, and then they then they call me on the phone saying, "Well, it lo won't let me download for a new copy of it. Like they need a copy six months later." Well, you've unsubscribed, but we want your free software. Then you have to resubscribe. Well, we don't want a free. Uh, this funny conversation. So off I go. But uh, the number one thing that comes up with with the software, a it's completely unlocked. It's completely free. If you don't like the title, for example, projects, maybe you don't have projects, or a lot of businesses call projects jobs in quotes right so you can change those names you can change these things we're going to go through this so you can either remove it off screen get rid of it um, rename it if you want or maybe use this as inspiration a lot of businesses would take use one or two modules out of here and get rid of the rest it's much easier than to remove something than really it is to complete uh, create it completely from scratch so we've done that for you so it is completely unlocked um, and we're going to talk about all that. And so this is this interface here. Well, we're going to talk about we got we got a lot of basics to cover today. And people go, why is it free? There's got to be a catch. Yeah, the catch is that um, I've been doing this for 32 years, and I give away literally uh, about a 90 to 100 copies of this software every day. This is the newest version. There's always someone in there who needs help, who wants to hire my company, the people who built it to help them. Um, so it's like if you bought a car from Toyota, for example, and you went back to the Toyota dealer for uh, maintenance because you love them so much. That's kind of what I do. So uh, some of you will want help. Uh, others will hire other other consultants to help you with that. That's totally fine. Um, but it's completely unlocked. So a couple things have come up recently. So Claris is, the, at the end of the day, nothing has really changed. Uh, this FileMaker software, the FileMaker platform, has been called that for 30 some odd years. The company that creates it's called Claris or Claris International. They are, a, they are a wholly owned subsidiary of Apple. That's a fancy way of saying they're really kind of a department of Apple. For, for they're, they're closer to being a department of Apple or a division of Apple than this separate company that's self-sufficient. Because they use a lot of Apple resources. They're in Apple buildings. They're down there in uh, Sunnyvale and Cupertino area is their headquarters. So, um, so basically you're dealing with Apple software here, which gives you a good feeling. In fact, Apple runs it through the security ringer trying to hack it before they allow it to be released. So the Apple security people, which are not part of Claris, get in there and try to break into the software. And once 
once Apple approves it as being safe, then it goes out for, for sale. Most people don't know about that. But it's one reason why sometimes uh, Claris will want to ship an update, and then it's delayed a week or two because the security people are really uh, uh, hammering on it hard trying to break it. So understand the FileMaker platform, A, it's software from Apple, B, it's a database. But a database, really a legitimate database of what a database is, is essentially like an Excel spreadsheet. It's columns and rows of data. A data that's really the, 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 the specific definition of a database. When someone says, I have a database, and they show you something like this, right, over here, this is a database with a graphical front end, okay? The database itself, you can actually see it looks like columns and numbers. It looks like a spreadsheet, a Google Sheet, Excel, whatever. That's what it looks like under the hood. It's just columns and rows. This is a graphical interface. So what FileMaker's done and why they're so successful is for the last 30 some odd years, they've combined that the, actually it's not even in here, but it should say the data, right? Or, or oh, there it is, data, there it is. I was, it was on that previous page. It's the data, they combine the data with the interface with some app logic and the app logic are scripts that you write little programs and people say oh I don't want to be a programmer this is really simple right we're gonna discuss on one or a couple days the basics of writing a script if you could tell one of your staff to go um, go to the screen perform a find for Fred sort by last name and print if you could say those words and think that out to one of your staff you can write a script because the script steps are literally that simple. The script steps are go to this screen, find Fred in the first name field or last name field or whatever you want to find, perform a sort, print a PDF, print it out, whatever. And then you can put that as a button and you're done. People are like, I don't want to be a programmer. No, pro no real hardcore programming is involved. This is what they call low code. So people say, what is FileMaker? Why is this, why is it successful? And that's because, uh, data, the interface, the logic, the scripting, the reporting is really part of the interface. So the, Claris put this here uh, when they wrote this was off out of their curriculum originally. The reporting is just another interface uh, screen for, for printout. But they put it here because people expect to kind of see it and if they don't see it they think it's not in there. The new one, the new one over the last five, ten years is all these API integration. Uh, uh, people say, oh I'm gonna have uh, my system uh, talk to Slack. So you an order comes into your database. You see it with the interface. A script runs for some reason. It, either you start the script or the script triggers automatically. So someone puts an order in. They place an order for you. They put a job in for you to perform. You have a new adoption request for a puppy or a kitty or something or whatever your job is. If you're Michael Scott and he was back at Caltrans from 10 or 15 years ago, then it might be a building a bridge or a retrofit of a bridge for seismic retrofit for earthquakes in California, right? And he'd have a screen and it would, instead of this being a customer or contact, it'd be this bridge and the project and de the dates and the deadlines, things like that. So, um, so the integration is where you connect it to Slack, you connect it to email, you connect it to PayPal, you connect it to some third party service. FileMaker is very, very good at doing this. Uh, it does it very, very well. Um, so, you can connect to other database systems if you want, MySQL, things like that. Uh, this this was written before really the API thing took off, so Margaret, we should probably update this paragraph here at some point. Security mm -hmm. is a big one. Security is a huge part of what we do. Like I said, I mentioned to you, Apple runs this through the security ringer trying to break into it. But we're going to talk about basic security and what you need to know as you start to build an application or you take a copy of starting point and you want to share it with your team. It's a two-step process. You have it on your computer like this. You customize it to what you want it to do. Okay. You want to share it. So then you want to put it on the server. And in the process of you putting it on the server somewhere, you have to put security on it because the servers generally won't let you host something without at least a, a basic username and password on it. When we ship this file to you, notice that when I open this file, it didn't ask me for the security. The security is off, right? Didn't ask me for a security code. Um, that's because when you're brand new to FileMaker, I don't want to throw up a f uh, what we call a friction point. A friction point is like sandpaper. Um, it's something that keeps you from sliding in and looking at something really nicely. Um, if, if I said you had to take a test drive in a Toyota or a Honda vehicle of some type and you had to fill out 45 pages of documents proving that you're a good driver, 
that's 45 pages of friction you would never do that the way it works with most if you go buy a car anywhere or try out a car or lease a car buy a rented car you just they give them their driver's license the other person jumps in with you and you go for a spin and 5 10 30 minutes later whatever you're done that's a low friction you want low friction um, that's why we ship it with the security off. People are like, Richard, there's no security in here because it's turned off. It's easy to turn on. We're going to cover that on day four or five. Okay. So security deployment. Deployment is this conversation of, of where you're going to put FileMaker server. So let me cover this real quick right here. This graphic is super, super, super important. You need to keep it in mind as we go forward. FileMaker server is up here. This could also be this, this server could also be in the cloud so we have a, a separate graphic where this server actually in this case it kind of is in the cloud up here the server could also be on premise a lot there's a lot of companies that want to compete with uh, Claris and the FileMaker platform saying hey we've got the most amazing thing and the problem is is that if you actually look at it objectively they kind of suck they won't tell you that they want your money but they do FileMaker has been in business 33 years plus why? Why? Because the product's great. One of the things it does, you can put the server on the cloud, or if you have some serious security considerations, for example, Mitsubishi Aircraft makes is working on a new fighter jet for Japan. They won't allow their stuff to be parked on Amazon just because they don't know who is Amazon is Amazon and they want it in their own data center. They also use FileMaker conveniently enough, right? I don't know how much of it they use, but I've done at least one project for them previously. I know they use it. So they take FileMaker, they take the FileMaker server, and they park it in their office, in their data center, where they control it with their own employees. So if you have national secrets, you're building the next sixth-generation stealth fighter, for example, then maybe that should be with your own security team on-premise, what they call on-prem or on-premise. It's a slang you'll hear for that. And then if you want it on the cloud, most of all, my database are up in the cloud because mostly I don't deal with stealth fighters or nuclear weapons or anything super crazy. Um, even medical record data can be up in the cloud, assuming it's pr protected. But some things are beyond someone's heart condition. It's beyond, you know, we're talking worldwide, worldwide domination. It's like a some sort of video game, right? So when you start dealing with, with big things like that, then, yeah, having it on-premise where you control it is a good thing. So understand that's the conversation about deploy how are you going to get FileMaker your application out there once you have it on your desktop right now this file is not deployed anywhere right this little file right here it's only for me if I park it on a FileMaker server I can share it with people on iPhone and iPad using FileMaker Go if you're on the Mac or Windows computer using FileMaker Pro for those of you wondering whatever happened to FileMaker Pro Advanced it was combined together it's not those little terminology moments some of you may not be aware of uh, a couple of years ago, Claris decided that they would combine Pro and Pro Advanced together into one product to simplify things. It was another way of kind of minimizing the friction. I, I, we got some questions on Twitch. Okay, go ahead. So, question on Twitch is what Mac OS are you running? This one right here is Monterey. So the way it generally works historically with FileMaker or Claris, remember you're dealing with Apple, so it's an Apple department at Apple. They're not going to incentivize you to use a computer from 20 years ago. So... That does cause some problems. I ran into another gentleman, uh, maybe that's you, uh, who had a computer that um, was Catalina or whatever before that. You need to be using at least uh, uh, Catalina, which is 10.15, right? And then after Catalina was Big Sur, and after that was Monterey. So FileMaker 19 works all the way back to Catalina, so it works the current operating system back to. If you're on Mojave, I don't think it's compatible anymore, um, somewhere in there. Uh, and that, when I say not compatible anymore, I'm talking about the latest version. The latest version of FileMaker today, today, once again, by the time you watch this video, if it's a recording, but the About menu would say this is 19.4, so the current version, those of you wondering, is 19.4. Um, the next version will be 19.5 at some point, once again, uh, subject to whatever timeline uh, you're, if you're watching it live, 19.4 right now. Let's talk about terminology. So if you folks have terminology questions, now's a good time to ask terminology questions. Obviously, anytime terminology is good. FileMaker Pro. FileMaker Pro is the professional authoring tool that works on Mac or Windows. It only works on Mac or Windows. It typically works on the newer versions of Mac or Windows. I think it works on Windows 10 and Windows... Uh, I don't think 7 support anymore. You'd have to go check it out. But Windows 10, right? And uh, Michael, are you there? You're a Windows guy, right? A little bit? 
Are you having... uh, not not so much. I have a Windows PC, but I, I typically do most of my development on Mac. Okay, and that's a good tip if you're doing development and you have users that are on mixed platform. You probably should like I have a Windows laptop over here. I can use for testing. Uh, very good. What version of Windows do you have on your laptop? You my know? version of Windows is Windows 10. Okay, yeah, that seems to be kind of a common one. Now, in the future, at some point, um, Claris is trying to kind of come up with this idea that maybe they won't call it FileMaker anymore. They'll call it Claris Pro. Um, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't particularly care at this moment. Just so you know, at the end of the day, it's really Pro, which is the software you're going to use to build your application or to customize your application. It's also the software you use on Mac or Windows to at, to use the solution. So your users will use Pro on Mac or Windows. As a developer, you will use that on, on uh, Mac or Windows, the same tool, right? The tool has that ability. Yeah, Ruben, thank you, Ruben. 18.8.1 uh, is the minimum for um, for Windows, right? So I know that 7, a lot of people still had 7, and they hadn't been supported in a long time. They still use it. Even some government agencies, which always makes me cringe a little bit. All right, so that's the terminology of Pro, and it may be Claris Pro or FileMaker Pro. Hosting your own custom application. Let's talk about server real quick. Once we kind of move into the future here a little bit, I might say the term server loosely. Server, server is a term, interesting term. It could mean the hardware that the server is running. Server is also, there is a product called FileMaker or Claris FileMaker Server, which is Mac, Windows, and Linux. And then there is also what they call Claris Cloud, which is where Claris takes their server software and they bundle it together with a piece of hardware on Amazon, and then they resell that as a service. So the acronym that you'll see for that, I'll just write it in here real quick. You'll see big ass little AAS, that's software as a service. And the idea is that uh, you take your uh, application, you don't want to, you don't have to worry about the hardware. It just works. Um, so loosely, these two do the same thing. So this is the historic FileMaker server. This is the new one that's been around for the last four, five, six years. And it, you know, it costs more, but it costs more because you're paying for the hardware and the software in one bill, right? And it's a subscription uh, that you buy because Claris is renting the server on your behalf from Amazon. So if they're renting it for a year from Amazon, they're going to pass that price across you to Amazon. If you interact with cloud servers, I, I, there was this conversation going on the other day. I, I, the person wanted to buy uh, what we call, I can't even, I'm spacing on the name right now, but it was the, uh, you have an annual license subscription, and then you have the subscription where you buy it once and you own it forever. That's how software used to be sold in the old days. It was a lot of software that was on shelves. You buy it once for 300 bucks. You never had to buy it again. The problem is, is that a lot of things don't lend themselves that way, right? If you go and rent it, if you want a car rental, you want to borrow someone's car, you don't get to pay once for the rental and then drive it around, right? That's the way Amazon works. When you go to Amazon, Amazon, for the most part, owns all the, the servers that are in their data center. They own them. They bought them. They're not going to sell you one for two ninety nine dollars and let you get to use it forevermore for the next 10 years for free. It doesn't work that way. So they're going to sell you a subscription. Um, most of the time you pay for it annually um, or uh, do a one-year reservation or two or three-year reservation so you get a good discount with that. But the idea is that it's really the world's going to subscription model. Yeah, I'm spacing on that term. But yes, if someone, uh, feel free to yell that at me. Perpetual, thank you, perpetual license, which was always it. You buy it once and it's perpetually valid, perpetually valid. Um, you just can't buy hardware that way uh, uh, from Amazon in their data center because it's their hardware. They're not selling it to you. They let you borrow it, right? That's how that works. So that's Claris Cloud. Uh, these they, these have largely, at the end of the day, for basic beginning people, they do the same thing. They run, they encrypt the data, they make backups. It's re really, at the end of the day, your server, you want the server to be boring. You don't want an exciting server. You want the server to reliably run every minute of every day reliably. You want to make backups all the time, every 10 or 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever you set it for. And you want the data to be encrypted and totally protected from bad guys, right? And so um, Claris Cloud backs up every 20 minutes automatically. Claris FileMaker Server backs up the way you configure it. Normally, we back up at least at RCC every hour, if not every 30 minutes or so. Um, and there's reasons for that, once again different conversations. So this is this kind of conversation that we have right here. So Claris FileMaker Go. 
great tool. It works on iPhones and iPads. It works on iOS devices. I have to be careful saying that because it doesn't work on the watch and it doesn't work on the Apple TV and blah, 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 blah. But it works on iPhones and iPads, which are the predominant products of the platform. It basically, what they did is they took a copy of FileMaker Pro way back in the day. They stripped the development capability out of it and they kind of adapted it and they made it work on the, on the mobile device. So that's because the code base between the Mac and these iOS devices was very, very similar. It had a very similar programming base under the hood. It was easy for them to do that. In fact, it was done by an engineer over the weekend as a bet. It was a Friday bet at Claire's headquarters. I was there. The bet came in, and I and I heard about it kind of after the fact. And the and the guy, his name was Chris Krim, fantastic guy since retired. He took it over the weekend to his garage, built this thing, brought it back on Monday, and said, "I built this, and it works on my iPhone." Right? And everyone was blown away. Right? Um, and this was 2008, I think. That's what works there. Now the question always comes up: Hey, where's the Android version of this? The code base for Android is totally different. It's not an easy port to move it from. Mac to Android or from anything Apple has right now. There's no easy move uh, transportability of the code. So they would have to, millions of lines of code, they would have to rewrite those millions of lines and certify them. It's uh, unlikely you'll see an Android version of FileMaker. If you're interested in an Android accessibility on the Android device, you need to take a look at LiveCode. It's a third-party product called LiveCode. It's designed to work with FileMaker. So it's called LiveCode for FileMaker. It's a great tool. It allows you to take FileMaker. In fact, we did a five-day training session. Oh, it was a 10-day training session on it, right? Was it 10 days, Margaret? I think it was 10 days. Yeah, 10 days. 10-day training session on how to take FileMaker and put it on Android. So it costs a little bit of money. It's a third-party product, uh, but it solves this Android problem for you, so it's kind of great. Claire Studio, upcoming product. Um, this is a service we've been talking about quite a bit on the daily live streams. At the end of the day, it's kind of new, and it's not revolutionary for anyone at the moment today. In six months or 12 months, it could be pretty amazing, but we were playing with it yesterday, and it's pretty lightweight right now. Um, but basically, it gives you some additional... If you have FileMaker Pro... And so this is your CR, this is your CRM running right here, and maybe it's up on the server. There's this Claris Studio service, which is like a integration. You can integrate with this service, and it can give you additional capabilities, right? And that's the idea. Uh, right now, the capabilities are limited to uh, so, uh, some anonymous person submits a informational form, like I want more information. Please reach out and talk to me. Right, you always see those on websites, and a lot of times you worry, you fill it out, and it doesn't go anywhere, and you never hear from the company, right? And you're pretty sure that it didn't work. Um, I hate those. But if you wanted to build one and actually have it work, you'd use Claire Studio, and it would send the data back into your copy of FileMaker, either on your desktop or on your, on your server. That's Claire Studio, so moving along. Uh, additional terms, very important terms. Clients, so what is a client? A very important term. I'm going to say... If you hear the, as we start to talk fast about other topics, I'm trying to be careful right now is what I say, so I'm technically precise. A client, if you're in a business, might be someone, your attorney, my client just paid us a retainer of $10,000. It's your customer. In the world of databases, it comes from the world of databases where the database server could have a client connected to it. Typically, that means the software that's connected to the server, that's, that's, reading or writing data to the server. So a FileMaker server, and I'm going to zoom back up here to the graphic right here. This is the uh, this is the server here. Each of these are clients, okay? The client could be a reference to the software running on this machine. The client could be a reference to the hardware that's running on this running this. So here it's a mobile device, an iPad or an iPhone. Um, but it's FileMaker Go here is the client. The hardware could be the client or the client could be loosely referred to as the person who's accessing it. For example, I am on this computer right here right now to my left. I'm going to move the camera over here briefly. You can see other computers where I'm monitoring questions that come in. So I have a, uh, and all these are connected to FileMaker, my FileMaker server. So I, Richard, am one client, but I have one computer, two computers, three computers, three computers that are clients. So when you use the word client, it's kind of an imprecise term, okay? Uh, and so you have to kind of understand what the person was talking about. It could be the software, the hardware, or the human that's behind it. 
assuming it's a human. I guess you could have a robotic client too, and then that would get very exciting. So the clients could be in the office, they could be out on the internet, they could be anywhere. Other terminology, developer. A developer, sometimes I'll say the word engineer. I refer to the uh, developers as engineers within my company. I have 30 developers that work for me. Uh, a couple administrative staff, et cetera, things like that. Logistics, for example, there's some people in the live stream here that don't really do development, but they um, help with other operational support uh, tasks. Uh, great review, get my head back in the game. Okay, great, Brent. I, I just want to make sure I'm not getting a lot of feedback here which either means people don't have questions or they're hor horrifically bored. Um, so let's talk about kind of terms. So we got client. We also have the word server. Now we talked about server before, but server, and I mentioned this again, could be the hardware that's somewhere, either on-premise on in your office or at your home or in the cloud somewhere. It could be the software. It could be FileMaker server. A lot of times I will say, hey, we're working on this database. Uh, why don't we put it on the server and check the performance? That's a loose term for parking either on FileMaker server or FileMaker Cloud. Because remember, FileMaker Cloud or Claris FileMaker Cloud is where they took their server software and they combined it with the hardware, right? And they made this software as a service thing. And so I might say that something loose like that, uh, it's up to your personal interpretation what that means a little bit. But I say, hey, why don't you, Brent, connect it to your server? And I don't know what server Brent's using, but if Brent is in a business and it's more than him using FileMaker, then Brent probably should have a server somewhere, even if it's only three or four or five people. A basic server backs up the files, keeps them safe. There's very important things that the server does. Um, and so uh, I highly recommend that. So the server is a little bit of a loose term. Client is a loose term, right? So what connects to a server? Clients. What are those clients? It could be a human. Could be referenced the hardware, could be referenced in the software. Okay, once again, there's the server conversation right here. So, what I say for the server? Server is where your cust your 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 custom, not customer, Margaret, custom solution is parked, right? When you build a Claris FileMaker solution, you have at least one FileMaker 12 file. This is the file right here. For those of you wondering about this, if I zoom in right here for everyone else, you'll see that this says. Uh, it says FMP12 right here, right? So that's the extension. That's the current file format. The current file format was invented for FileMaker Pro 12. It will continue to be that file format for a probably a long time. I've not heard anything about Claris changing the file format. So when you have a server and you have a solution, your solution is going to be at least one FileMaker, one FMP12 file. Within the file can be many many layouts many many tables can be millions and millions of records you could have a what we call a single file solution this right here is a single self-contained solution back prior to filemaker 7 each file was its own table correct yeah each file was its own table and this is 1999 or 2000 2001 whenever that started to come out um, like 20 years right so that's a long time. Um, so if so, if you run into someone's solution and they have 20 or 30 files, that tells you that solution was originally built over 20 years ago. It's probably pretty old because if someone builds a solution now, it'll be one file or they might have a compelling reason to have maybe two or three files to separate certain things for some reason. Once again, way outside our, our wheelhouse of conversation right now, but that's, that's a dead indication. People come to me and say, hey, we need help with this file. Uh, it's 50 files. That tells us it was engineered the, the last century, not this century. The last century was engineered. So um, it may have some really old, archaic uh, code into it. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It might work just great. But if I'm being hired to work on that, that makes me more nervous than I would be otherwise, right? If I hire a mechanic to work on an airplane that was manufactured and hasn't flown since 1940, 80 years ago, the mechanic is not going to be so excited about that, right? So I know that for a fact. Local file. So this is a local file. It is not a hosted file. A hosted file would be up on the cloud. If I want to access a copy of this that I've already parked on the server, I'm going to go into FileMaker Pro. I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and close this file right here. I'm going to say file, open, host. Most of the time, most of you will not have any host right here. You'll say, um, show host or add a host, you have to somehow put the address of the host in. The host is going to be either on your own office network 
or it's going to be out in the cloud. So we have a server called trial.atrcc.com. So if those of you have a copy of Starting Point as we play with it, you want to park it there, we will we will help you with that. So I can say, host, show me all the files on trial at rcc.com. A window pops up, and we see um, all sorts of uh, trial databases that are up there. These are all separate files. Remember, um, a, a solution. So let's talk about the idea, the word solution, custom map, database. Really, database refer, refers to, strictly speaking, the columns of data. But a lot of people say, show me your database. And they mean show them your FMP12 file, which is database and interface and all this other stuff. So once again, some words lack precision or the person spewing it, like myself, is lacking precision. Hopefully you understand that concept. So these are all uh, individual files here. So if you have a solution, remember we said a little bit ago, if you if someone said, hey, work on my solution or my custom app, a solution and custom app and yeah, template, etc. those all essentially mean the same thing. It's the, 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 the a single file that does your work or a collection of files that work together, they talk to each other that do the work for you. Okay. And so in this situation here, you can't really tell which files are part of a solution, but I can tell you that when we ship out FM starting point, um, it's a self-contained single file solution. So this is different sample files for whoever these are for, right? Um, and then there is a sample of a toolbox, etc. Where is that copy? Oh, there's a Rocket Bunny registration there. So this is FM starting point that's running there. If I wanted to get in one of these FM starting points, are there any of these available, Michael, that I could just open up and look at right now? Absolutely not. You need your own credentials okay. uh, to open up your own file. Okay, so why don't I do that? I'm going to demonstrate this for everyone. So let's say... Now, this is, we're jumping out ahead today, but we're probably coming to the end of the uh, low code, getting started. Yeah, we're kind of there. So let's talk about if you have your own copy of FileMaker, a little little uh, old copy of FileMaker. Okay. FileMaker is an app. It's on your hard drive right over here, right? Once again, Claris is trying to change the name of that. So it, it may be called FileMaker Pro or Claris Pro, if you can see that over there. Sorry about that. So I should be primarily using... FileMaker Pro. Um, I'm going to close that, come back out. So I have a solution that's running locally here. It's not on the server. I want to share it with my team. Okay, I want to share it with my team. In order to do that, I have to give it a basic username and password. I'm going to open the file up in FileMaker Pro on Mac or Windows. Okay, it's going to pop up somewhere, wherever it went. So I open up the file right here. Okay, here we are. And there's Haley over there, a little video saying, hey, you could turn this into a dashboard. And so you go file. Uh, you're, you're in the file. You go file down to manage. So that This is a kind of a critical area. The area that you're going to be getting in and out of most of the time is uh, database. Right here you see security. You see database. These are two big ones. Um, the rest of these you'll be in less often, I think, or maybe never. Um, I think you can go to manage scripts right here, but a lot of people will say to get the scripts, they go scripts and they say script workspace. This is where we build those little programs. We said, go to this layout, do a find, sort the information, print to a PDF, basic English, not a bunch of fancy programming. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file manage security. So if I go and file manage security, when you have a brand new file in the FileMaker platform, it will come set up this way. It comes with the full access. This is in red right here. Full access is turned on, which means you are, um, in the world of Unix, they're considered a super user or God mode or whatever you want to call it. You can do anything to this file. You can add to it, edit, delete it, do whatever you want. We are uh, This is the only account that's in here right now. We're going to cover security in more detail later. But what I want to do is it says it's red right here because there is no password. So I click on it. I say I would like a password. Put a password in. I'm going to put the password in as, well, I'm just going to put it in as, as admin. It's very unsecure. Admin, admin. You put it in twice. The password says it is weak. Yes, it is weak. I agree with that. Now, I mean, you're going to make me do this real quick. So it's I, I want to be careful with this. I don't want it to fail. So we're in security. One of the things we want to do is this. Claire's made this interface to show you. They tried to simplify it for people. The problem is it's so limited that it's just like, to stop. So what you'll do, you would have like instead of admin, you'd have Fred as, as a password. Fred, you have Sally, a Dick, and Jane. Everyone should have their own uh, username and password, ideally. 
in a small company and everyone you love and trust they'll never betray you at all then everyone has the same username and password and they all share the same credentials when you're building your very first file microfile running locally on your computer that's pretty common as soon as you put that up on a server you really really should think about having your own username and password so I'm going to switch to advanced settings down here press the button and I'm going to look at priv extended privileges okay so I just wanted to make sure that sharing is on so what ends up happening is that if we're over here in uh, full access I double click it it brings up this screen right here okay and fundamentally full access has you can add or edit everything is modifiable everything's turned on and you can't turn it off because there always has to be a master administrative person um, level of access extended privileges are sharing so I'll say that again this has actually been a test question when Sarah, uh, if you ever take a, a FileMaker certification test they say extended privileges kind of regulate what and what it does it regulates the sharing when FileMaker server shares it with other things so if you share it with other databases what that is this is sharing it with other people using FileMaker Pro okay that's what that one is it's already checked off so we're okay I wanted to make sure this is checked off so it didn't fail right and so you want to make sure that's turned on it's administrative that's all set I say okay it's before I close it say be sure did you write it down did you write it down a lot of people don't write it down please everyone's saying it says don't write it down on a post-it note stick it on your computer half of you won't do that and then you'll forget the password I have done that I'm like oh, I'm a CEO I'm important I should remember this and then I don't write it down and like a month then I don't look at it for a month I come back going damn it anyone remember the password and no one wrote it down and so as much as I wouldn't say put it on a post-it note and stick it on the front of your house or apartment but putting it on your computer at least for now until you have or if you have a little book somewhere you write that down my wife has a book where she writes all that stuff down all right so I'm gonna put admin in right here admin right here but please write it down the reason I, I go off in little moments like this is because the day is tomorrow's in tech support and we we have hunt we have thousands of customers worldwide thousands literally and someone's gonna lose their password and they're gonna call me like how do we get it back right so I'm gonna say admin admin verify now watch this if I double click the file again click click it says oh you can't come in automatically anymore so admin admin so when you download starting point the first time it's gonna be set to auto enter with no passwords it's gonna let you in now I'm putting a password on it to share it okay it's open it works so what I want to do now is I uh, I show the status toolbar up here I can say view and I say status toolbar right here this is this area up here I did the keyboard shortcut a second ago but I say view status toolbar this is also allows you to navigate records off topic once again I could go on for hours until I fell over unconscious talking about FileMaker but when you're in starting point if I don't want people to flip through records, I don't show the status toolbar. The script step says show it or don't show it. It's very simple. If I go to contacts, I want people to flip through the records. Flip, there's Sue, there's Paul, there's Neil. I want you to be able to flip through these. When I go to the home screen, I don't want them flipping through records, so we hide it. So when I press the home button right here, watch the top, you'll notice it goes away. Okay. But to upload the file easily, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, show the status toolbar and there's this big button up here that says share okay and I'm going to say upload to host Claris hates the word server for a lot of stuff they use the word host I don't ever get this why this is but it should say upload to server and and since we're saying it generically that means it could be what it could be FileMaker server or it could be FileMaker cloud you could upload to either one which one did you buy which one do you have access to in my case this is FileMaker server running on Windows running on an Amazon virtual server so it's up in the cloud upload to host it's gonna say it's gonna close the file before it uploads it we say okay okay and then what I do is I I can add a server in here you would put the server address in here right and I already had a server address is trial.atrcc.com now the problem is is that I have to put a username and password in here and I have to find the username and password everyone and I literally it's written down for me in a undisclosed location that I'm going to find right now 
Anyway, so the file is now uploaded. It's done. It's open on the FileMaker server. It says, hey, would you like to access it? You have to remember your password, which was admin, admin, and it opens up. So now I'm accessing it on FileMaker server. Okay. So I have to have a license. I have to have a server. But now it's being backed up automatically. Other people, anyone out there who has FileMaker, you can log on to it and use it too. It's totally great. Please to behave yourself. Sometimes I get some really questionable, uh, not safe for work memes there. So we're running out of time here. We're past time uh, on this. We have one last question uh, from Tipsy from Washington. Yes. Uh, will these be 60 or 90 minutes each day? Or just uh, when they end? It's when they end, but they'll be generally we're shooting for 60, so we're now done. Any questions along the way? I'm not really watching my Zoom questions over here. I should come over here. Jennifer's there. I have FileMaker 19 running on my Windows laptop. Do I need to purchase another license order for to install and run on my MacBook Pro? That's a great, great, great licensing question. The answer is, if it's you, Jennifer, no. So I, I'm kind of an outlier here, but I do, as you can tell, I do a lot of training. I have an office here. I have an office in Santa Clara. I have a off, small office in Los Osos. I have a small office in Dallas. So I have like 12 computers that are dedicated to me. I had to buy FileMaker once. Once. Because I'm paying a per user license. Their licenses are user-based for the most part. Anyway, tomorrow is... Margaret, what's the topic for tomorrow? What are we getting into tomorrow? What is our conversation? Uh, a theorem tomorrow is... Day two is tables, fields, layouts, records, modes, found sets. Yep, the we're going to go back the basics of all the under the hood structure stuff. So we'll be playing inside a FileMaker Pro tomorrow and working on that. Today is kind of your overview. So sorry if it's boring. Uh, if you're watching this, uh, tune into another day where it's more exciting for you. All right, Mikey, everyone there, Bob, Gadidi, Lynn, Mike Johnson, all you folks there, Tim, CC, uh, Tim. Yep, have a good one. I appreciate it. Uh, that's it for today. Catch you tomorrow.